It looks like the chip tray got dented a little bit in shipping, but that's not too big a deal. There were a couple of parts that were just loose in the box. The bag of accessories didn't have a tear or opening in it, so they must have fallen off in shipping. It was hard to tell when this dial was properly installed or not. It didn't offer very much confidence in how it was seated. It included a Ziploc bag full of a lot of accessories, gears, uh, various tools that you need for the unit. Before getting too much further, I wanted to plug it in and make sure everything turned on and was seemed to work the way it was supposed to. Here I was testing the forward and reverse functions as well as the speed control and on-off buttons. This is a quick test of the power feed. Overall, the lathe came pretty well oiled, but there was one dry spot on the chuck that developed a little bit of rust. Also, the metal used was relatively cheap and there was some pitting. Unfortunately, both of the plastic control dials were cracked, but it doesn't seem that this is affecting how they work too much, at least at this point. Some other minor damage in shipping, but not too bad. The fit and finish could be a little bit better overall. This will definitely be a source of aggravation in the future. The nut to tighten the tailstock hits the supports. Uh, a little clearancing with a grinder should be able to take care of that without too much trouble. Again, the finish leaves a bit to be desired. The handle to lock the tailstock hits the rear guard, but that's tolerable. Since there's no spindle on these controls, the handles seem to unscrew. Conveniently, a lathe is the best tool to make new handles, but I could see this being an annoyance in the future. I found this extra handle and it seemed to fit there. I don't know what it's for. There's a lot of slop in the left to right control. It operates smoothly though. Inconveniently to change the angle you have to back the left to right slide all the way off to access the bolts. Another unusual thing is, while there's an angle indicator, 
there's no reference lines machined into the base. The controls seem to work smoothly. The forward and reverse style is a little bit more deliberate than it needs to be, but it works well. Again, the fit and finish leaves a bit to be desired. For some reason, when I was loosening the truck the first time, it caught. There must have been a machining chip stuck in there but I didn't have that issue after winding it in and out again. It comes with a dead center for the tailstock and seems to work great. It lines up with the truck pretty well but is a little bit off center and will need some adjusting before doing any drilling with a drill chuck. The safety guard does its job Again, the fit and finish could be a little bit better, but safety first. More fit and finish. It comes with almost every tool you need to make adjustments on this lathe, except for a screwdriver for the handles. It's not a tremendous value, but it also comes with this little oiler. Might be convenient. This is the set of gears for changing the speeds and ratios between the truck and the power feed. An extra fuse, nothing special. Some additional wide grip clamps for the chuck. And I went ahead and ordered a drill chuck for the tail stop. This is a cheap one off Amazon, I'll link below. It fits in pretty well. It's a little bit long, and this is a standard MT2 style chuck. Pretty common to these mini lathes from what I've read. I also ordered a set of center drill bits. Unfortunately, with the drill chuck installed, you don't get the full working length that is advertised. Since there aren't any tools included with this lathe, I went ahead and ordered some carbide tip tools, a boring tool, uh, as well as a quick change tool post. I just happened to get lucky that all this stuff showed up at the same time. I'll also link these below. This is the quick change tool post. It's an easy replacement for the one that exists. It includes two 3 8 square holders, a 3 8 round boring tool holder, as well as a half inch cutoff tool holder. Here's where that extra handle went. With the tool post removed, you can see the settings to hold the tool post at perfect 90 degree angles, but it doesn't quite hold it. It more gets in the way than anything else. Thankfully, this is quickly removed. Unfortunately, the threads on this lathe are not cut very well. This old tool post holder was uh, a little bit more difficult than it should have been to get out. Starting to fit the new quick change tool post, I ended up having to re-tap the hole to get the new bolt to go in. A quick clean out with the tap and everything went together pretty smoothly though.
It took a little trial and error to get the quick change tool holders to fit on both sides with the cam to tighten them both. Finally, I had to add the tools to the tool holders. Making sure they were on the center wasn't too big of a challenge. I just used the dead center in the tail stop to line up the tip of the tool with the tip of the dead center. And then repeated the process for the other tools. Finally, with everything assembled, I decided to do a quick test run using a piece of PVC pipe. In case anything were to go wrong, I figured the PVC pipe would be most forgiving. And it's also relatively easy to turn on a lathe. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the performance of this lathe, especially for the price. Now to turn some mild steel. This is a piece of 1018 mild steel, a uh, three quarter inch in diameter that I turned down to just over half an inch. The finish is Impressively not as terrible as it could be. Um, so far I'm pretty impressed with how this performs on metal. Unfortunately I wasn't able to get too much further. Uh, that knocking noise ended up being the gears stripping out. Uh, this seems to be something that happened um, Probably when it was assembled, uh, either bad gears were used or it wasn't assembled correctly. Uh, either way, this lathe is going to have to go back and I'm going to have to get a replacement. So stay tuned for take two of the cheap Chinese mini lathe. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like this, please click like and subscribe. Um, at this point, the rest of this video is just going to be turning another little piece of steel I found before it broke. Enjoy!